It's time to reverse engineer my best performing article and see exactly what it takes to rank on Google in 2024. Let's get into it. This article is one that has been just consistently performing very, very well throughout the year that uh, this website has been online. It has almost a million impressions and tw uh, 20K clicks in less than a year. Um, which if you actually compare to my entire website, it's almost a third of the impressions and it's about a third of the clicks just for one article. Now, Two Men is just absolutely destroying right now. I'm so happy and so proud of this. I wanted to talk about what you actually need to do in an article to rank on Google today. So this is going to be like a beginner level video, but I think even if you're an expert, you will still learn something. Now, this is the article right here, and I'll actually leave um, a link to this. I do have this on Pastebin, but we're going to go through this. It's currently in Markdown, and I just want to go through everything one by one. So the first thing that you need to make sure, or the way that I do it anyway, you don't have to do it exactly like this. First of all, you need a featured image with some text, preferably. If you don't want to bother putting text on, it's not a huge deal. Um, if you, This needs to be unique. Okay, so whether you use Dali or whether you have, you know, your own product photos or, you know, shooting photos. I mean, not everyone has shooting photos. This shoot cost like a grand. So I know, I understand not everyone has this. If you don't have access to that kind of um, resources, definitely use ChatGPT Dali. It's very, very good. What you can do is you can put an overlay over the picture and then just put some text and make it branded. That's just a really, really good way to do it. Then you need a table of contents. If you're on WordPress, there is literally a million table of contents plugins, or you can just code one yourself, or you can uh, use shortcode, I believe. If you're on Shopify, I use Rough Rough app by T-Sun. This app has never let me down once. Um, it's an amazing app. It's also free. So yeah, the, you can't really go wrong. Now, one of the first things you have to realize is that the main title goes in the box at the top of the CMS. What does that mean? On Shopify and on WordPress as well, there is a um, title um, box. So you just want to put your box right there. Now, there's a couple of ways to do titles. I personally like to do slightly longer titles, although I have, if you look at the journal, I have recently been experimenting with shorter titles. It's just, I'm just trying to see what works best, okay? But for me, what has always worked best are longer titles. So you want to try and put as many keywords in this title as possible. So old money aesthetic is a huge keyword. We're probably not ranking for this on page one because it's literally just a ridiculous keyword. It's so popular. And then uh, brands as well. So old money brands is also a keyword. So you might think that because there's the word aesthetic in between them, it won't work and it's not a keyword anymore but this should still be ranking for old money brands if i'm not wrong so old money brands this was kind of my big ranking for on two men it's been a while since i checked it we are still here but you can just see so many people have released you know more up-to-date content more recent content uh 2023 you can see 2022 etc etc so Another thing that you can do is you can update the content. So that is probably something that I should do to this article. I should definitely update it. So then we've got ultra wealthy brands as well. So this is also another keyword that I'm trying to rank for. So we'll do ultra wealthy brands and we'll see if two men is here. It is. So you can see how this works, okay? It's not all one. Keywords don't have to be next to each other, okay? Ultra wealthy and brands is still in the title. This is the premium real estate when it comes to keywords. People think that what you need to do is take, you know, old money aesthetic and just spam it throughout the article a million times, okay? That is not how I recommend writing content. You can use the title as like a keyword plug, make sure it makes sense, make sure it doesn't look stupid, et cetera, et cetera. But after that, I mean, I, I think I only mentioned it like a few times. Or it looks like I've mentioned it 11 times in this article, which is quite a lot for me, to be honest with you. Although three of those are, um, you know, in, in the table of contents. So it's more like seven times in the article. Considering it's the huge, like 200,000, 300,000 searches per month keyword, it's not really spamming the keyword, just putting it uh, six or seven times in an article. 
This is the only place it really needs to be, though. Here, maybe in an alt text, you know, maybe in a meta description, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't have to be spammed throughout the entire article. Now, I'm going to switch to Markdown here just so that we can understand this a little bit better and we can see what's actually going on here. You want to write a short introduction. You do not want a huge wall of text, okay? The, the worst thing you can do here is just have a wall of text. Let me show you an example of this on uh, Tiny Home Hub. So you can see here we have the featured image and then the title and then just just a you know a giant, giant, giant wall of text, okay? This article was kicked off Google's rankings almost immediately. It lasted about two weeks just because of this ginormous wall of text. You do not want wall of text, okay? You always have to look out for that. Then I always like to have a list or more recently I've been doing uh, key takeaway tables. You can see this is kind of that concept just in a slightly different way, trying to rank for old money brands, but also specifically what this does, tables and lists here is featured snippet, okay? So I, I don't know if I can show you an example of this because I think we lost the featured snippet a while back. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks like we lost it. But if I write two men here, obviously no one's going to search that. Okay, so if you search ultra wealthy brands two men, I know that's not a good keyword. I'm not trying to claim this is a good keyword. But what it does is you can see right here, it captured the featured snippet for this keyword that nobody's going to search for. But you understand the point, okay? The point is because you have a list and you just answer the question immediately, okay? Bang, 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 answer the question. They do not have to search through any more of the article because they've already got all of the answers they need. That is how Google creates featured snippets. Now, with SGE, search generative experience, I don't know how important featured snippets will be. However, will they be replaced by SGE? And if so, will they be drawing from the same list of articles? What do I mean that by that? I mean that potentially if you have a featured snippet now, you might have an SGE in the future. So I personally would not change this logic regardless of SGE, regardless of anything. Number one, because you may get the featured snippet or you may be included in the SGE. Number two is that it actually gives people a much better user experience, which increases your chances of moving up the SERP, the search engine result page. Okay, then we just have the standard layout for an article. We have an H2 title with some writing that was actually written by yours truly. I wrote this um, by myself. This was handwritten. Um, I do have articles that are ChatGPT generated that are doing just as well, if not better at this point than this article. But I do think it's interesting to note that this article was written by hand. You can actually tell if you read it as well. There's nothing really special here except internal links. Okay, this actually, looking at this, this doesn't look like it's even a real internal link. I don't know what's going on there, but interesting. Oh, yeah, it's to the home page. Sorry, it is a real internal link. And then we have another H2, some text, some internal links, okay? And then another list. Again, I'm trying to capture the featured snippet. This was back when I used to do a lot of internal links to blog posts. The reason being I was trying to grow the blog as a whole. I no longer really do that. I now focus on collection internal links instead of blog internal links. If you're wondering how to get these questions, what you do is you find your base keyword and then you say like ultra wealth, no, what? What brands do billionaires wear, okay? And then you just take these questions here. It's literally the oldest trick in the book. It does work. I don't care what people say, it does work, okay? You scroll down, you can also take some of these questions as well if you really want to, but you can literally just take the people also ask. I was watching a video from a, a newer YouTuber the other day, and they said that this doesn't work. It does. Okay, I don't, I don't know what I don't know what that person was talking about. Anyway, um, yeah. So, how should a millionaire dress up? Will, will have been one of the questions that was here. What brands do the one percent wear? This would be a beautiful little addition here. And then, honestly, there's nothing special here. Okay, 
You just have to make sure that when you generate an article with ChatGPT, and then I'll show you right now. Someone left a really weird comment, by the way, when I talked about some of my older videos from like a week ago. I, I, really, really weird. Okay, this is perfectly normal to do this. Um, if you want to know how I write my content with all of this already inside it using AI and ChatGPT to do it automatically, I will leave a link to this playlist in the description. This will show you exactly how I do what I'm about to show you, but automatically. This was handwritten. This is going to be how to do it automatically, okay? So one of the most important parts of any article, especially in e-commerce, I'll say probably exclusively in e-commerce, is this part right here, okay? You need to show unique content, unique images, okay? Whether that's you using Dali, whether you're a professional brand with lots of pictures, or whether you, I don't know, use Canva, okay? The important thing is that you have some unique imagery on the page. Now, the way that I'm doing this currently is I'm using my sitemap. If you don't know, Every website has a sitemap, and Shopify sitemaps have something really interesting, which is the image. So you can see here, this is an image. I'll show you right now, just to show you what I mean. So what you can actually do is you can automate this process using the playlist that I just showed you. And you can basically, you can use a filtered keyword like, I don't know, suit, and it will take all of the suits out and you can automatically put them into a chat GPT blog post. That's what these are right here. The exclamation mark and then two square brackets and then the photo and then a link. These are clickable photos from our shooting, but you can also just do product images. And that is literally as simple as it gets. That's literally it. That's all you have to do. You just have to do this process over and over and over and over. Now, let me show you another example of a blog post, which is using the exact same concept that I just showed you, except it's using product embeds instead of um, embedding product images. This is using a, um, a plugin for Shopify, which is called Hura, okay? It's called Hura Collection Embedder. If you have a lot of collections, this can be a very, very good way to do what you wanna do. But I actually prefer not using this anymore. Um, I'm not going to go into why necessarily in this video, but I, ju I just don't, I don't really like it. I don't, I, it's too clunky. It just takes too long, et cetera, et cetera. I'd rather use my automated system. But this is another article that is written using exactly the same logic that I've just explained in this video. It's a 200, it's a 300 word article maximum. And you can see it's really, really doing well right now. Up to 22 clicks per day, which I mean, doesn't seem like massive amounts. 898 impressions, let's have a look at the most recent date. 992 impressions, 23 clicks. And I'm gonna end this video by saying, I believe that yesterday was an all-time high. 20K impressions, is that an all-time high? No, it's not. It's very, very, very close to an all-time high. 398 clicks is the all-time high. This is 375. I'm super, super proud and super, super happy of the results here. And everything I did, in terms of blogging is what I've just shown you in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.